Hello everyone, in this video I'll demonstrate a new feature that I've added to Retention Architect called Spatial Constraints. So Spatial Constraint is a rule-based system that allows you to selectively place stuff on your dungeon based on the surrounding uh, based on the surrounding layout of your dungeon. So to give you an example, I'm going to place in a red colored decorative prop only on the corners of your dungeon. So start with, let's drop in a red mesh node, change the scale. Right now we want these red tiles only to appear on the corners. So to do that, go ahead and enable spatial constraints. And when you enable it, you will see the special constraint window pop up. Just go ahead and dock it somewhere. And this is purple node is the node that you are checking against. This is your ground node. And around this, you can place uh, as many rule nodes as, you, as you'd like. So since we want this to be in the corner, we, we want to make sure that there, it is surrounded by two fence nodes. So let's create a rule node drag and place it here create another rule node drag and place it here and we want to inside these nodes you can have constraints as many constraints as you'd like so i'm going to place in a marker exist constraint and name it and name it fence and i go select this add another constraint name it fence And you see this this works so it's very flexible you can move this around and see the life preview now we want this also uh, for inside the inside the rooms so we don't have fence in the rooms we have walls All right so I'm gonna go ahead and select this add another mark exist rule and call it wall and go ahead and select this add another one So if you have multiple rules, you have two options. Uh, either all of them should pass or any one of them should pass. So we don't have, uh, we have either a wall or a fence, but not both of them. So we want to change this from all rules must pass to at least one rule must pass. And let's do the same over here. And now we see this in the... In the rooms as well, and as you can see, it doesn't block the block the doors because we're checking against walls, so this will not be placed here. So I have a set of examples in the samples folder, so let's have a look at them. Now in this example, I'd like to place a green prop only near the doors, so. Uh, I have a rule node and just specify, make sure that there's a door here. So as simple as that. Uh, and there is another example, not near door. So in this case, I don't have any rule nodes. I've added my constraint in the reference node itself. And I've specified that I don't want doors within six units of the mesh that I'm checking against. So it'll check for this and see if there's a door tile within these six units let's check for this and search for it uh, and by default we are searching for a door right so this is how it would be we can invert the rule so this would add it only if there is no door tile found so this is basically inverting the logic we have a another example where we'd like to decorate the the walls adjacent to the doors and in the wall node i have one node here and it will be selected only if uh, first off I've enabled special constraint and I have moved the node to an edge because we are checking against a wall and a wall is in the edge and then I've added a rule node and here I just check if a marker exists and the name is door so if it's searching for this style for example it will check if there is a door here or here if it's not falls back to white uh, in this case it will check if there's a door here or here it has found a door here, so it just turns, uh, it selects this node. Uh, 
Now in this example we have a large decorative prop that we'd like to place in the corner of the rooms. Uh, however, we don't want this to be blocking the way. Uh, don't want it to be blocking the doorways. So the check for that is uh, we have the node that we're checking against and I've just added three tile nodes and placed in a ground constraint and I've added four edge nodes and I've placed a wall constraint so it makes sure that uh, we have four walls here and we have four, four ground tiles here so this has a nice effect of not blocking the doors it did not place it here because we enforce a wall here and we have a door instead In this example, we selectively decorate the uh, walls that are facing outside, that are on the edge of the dungeon, the, or the ones that are facing outside. So the check for this is that basically just check if one side has a ground, the other side does not have a ground. So if I select this and select this node, uh, we just make sure that this one does not have a ground tile. Basically, we're searching for a ground and inverting the rule. So it'll make sure that there is no ground marker here and there's a ground marker here. Now here's another way of doing this. Uh, now I'd like to have the edge walls to be, at the edge of the dungeon to be decorated with a large, large wall like this. And basically this is the default wall which falls back to this, uh, the red one. However, the ones that are inside it, I want it to be smaller ones. Uh, so to do that, uh, I just check if both the sides have a ground a ground tile. And if that is the case, we go ahead and select the white tile, otherwise fall back to this. So make sure there's a ground here, make sure there's a ground here. Now this is great for uh, for creating indoor based dungeons. For example, if you want to have like a cave based system where you don't want the player to see what's outside. Uh, so you can do this. This example shows you how to decorate the the dungeon based on the surroundings. So we have two two rules. I'm going to disconnect both of them and show you the first one. So basically, it just checks if there is a uh, it's adjacent to a to a wall or a fence. Uh, and if that is the case, it's going to, it is going to create a red tile here. And we want a curved tile to be in places like these. So to do that, I just have two tiles like this. If I'm checking for this, I want to have two tiles that, that have a fence, uh, I mean two, two edges that have a, a fence or a wall and we get a nice effect like this. Uh, this is, there is another way of doing this. Uh, in this example, we have, uh, we do this relative to the, not to the location of the corridors in the rooms, but to the outer, outer edge of the dungeon. So you see this line going through the room. And this is a relatively simpler rule. Basically, we just uh, create a rule node next to the one that we're checking make sure that it is empty we have searching for ground inverse another one like so but we check for it diagonally if you don't have it it's like this you want to fill up this thing so uh, just duplicate that one and move it up now here's another interesting example uh, if you want to create a game like diablo for example a top-down game your camera would be fixed in a certain angle it might be fixed like this in this angle and in this case you don't want walls that are blocking your view you, know, you want these larger red walls only on the the walls that are facing away from the camera and you want the smaller walls in this case so doing the doing this is uh, it's pretty simple we have uh, we have the same type of rules like we've seen before uh, however what I've done is I have if I select the node and go down here to the advanced section I have unchecked the check relative marker location checkbox. So basically what it does is it, 
it takes the orientation that you define here so this will work only for uh, only for the uh, for the walls that are laid vertically and this will work only for the walls that are horizontal and uh, even the positioning would not be rotated to fit it right? so I have also unchecked I've also unchecked rotate to fit so basically what rotate to fit is that if a certain layout doesn't work it tries to rotate it by 90 degrees four times at least to see whether the this, this setup fits or not but in this case we don't want it we want it to be all absolute rather than relative so uh, we have two, no two nodes for the wall and if both of them fail we fall back to the smaller one so here we we check for this so this is just working for these walls right you can see it here uh, and this is working for these walls why because uh, the check is for these the horizontal ones and this one will work only for the the ones that are facing like so so you have to go to the advanced section and uncheck this the advanced section and check this you have all this information in the comments here in all this comment section here's another example where we like to decorate uh, if you have a corridor that is just one of thickness just one then we like to decorate it in a certain way so if I am to remove this first this is how it looks by default but then if you have a if you have a very if you have a lane corridor with thickness one then we'd like to color it differently or we want to place a bridge over here so i'm going to place in a different ground ground tile and the way i do this is i simply place two rule nodes on the sides and make sure that the, there is no ground tile near them so when you check for this you just make sure that there is no it saw that there is no ground tile in either side so it went in and selected this node so the ground tile is inverse inverse and we also want the the fence to be uh, customized so that we can have a different type of a fence for the bridge so the way i do it is uh, i simply see that the 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 tile that is adjacent to the to this node has a ground ground marker and this one does not have a ground marker and the one after this has a ground marker is is empty does not have a ground marker so basically it's this empty this is occupied this is empty relative to the the tile that we're checking against so without any code you can you can do all of this and I think it gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, this will be available in the next update in 1.7.0 and I will uh, post more information on this on the forums. Thanks for watching.